So we have two flights of stairs, one on the ground floor, one on the first floor. And what we want to do is to make the railings between the ground floor and the first floor continuous. So there are a number of stages that we need to go through. The first one being that on the one coming up, we just want to make that go round and meet the one going onto the stairs on the first floor. So to do that, if we select the one from the, the ground floor, and you always get the option to edit path. We then flip to a plan view. And now what we can do is continue the path. And in Revit 2019 and in Revit 2018, this has made a lot easier because the path has a start and finish arrow. And what this allows us to do is to create a continuous path that will um, join the start and the end point, which wasn't available before until they added these start and finish options. Now, you must try not to extend the lines that have already gone because they go up at an angle. So that if you were to extend those lines, the path of the railing would continue to still go up to that angle and then it might be above the surface or below. So there are situations where you need this, but in this instance, we don't. So we're going to add an extra line. We make sure that it's set to chain so we can draw a continuous line. And all we do is continue from the path. This is the one that comes upstairs. We go out an amount, say about 300. We come across until it lines up. And it shows us when it's going to line up. And then we end at the what looks like the start of our path. But when we go to the view by clicking on the green tick and then going to the view itself, what we then see is that it returns round and meets the one going up the stairs on the first floor. Now, the only problem we have now is they're not at the same level. So we need to do something about that as well. So we can see that the reason why they're not at the same level is because the stair going up from level one terminates on a riser, which means that it is one tread above the level. So what we could do is to add an extra tread on by changing this, the setting of the stair run to say that it terminates on a tread. But that would make our runs uneven. So the other way to do that is to extend the railing coming down. So that's what we're going to do. So we select it. And we say edit path to this one. And now we switch to a floor plan. And the one coming down, which is this one with the arrow pointing upwards, this is the one time that we do extend it because we want to continue it coming down at a slope. So if we select it, I just happen to know that the tread depth is 250. So if I increase this dimension by 250, so now what we've done, we've increased it by 250. And if we click on the green tick and then go to our 3D view, It's at the right level, but now the one coming up overlaps it a little bit, so we'll need to edit that. So let's select that. We say edit path. And we switch back to our plan view. And we can take this one back. And we can see, because the other one is superimposed, how far we need to move it back to. It's a point of about here. Don't be afraid to zoom in to make sure it's perfectly accurate. That looks great, so let's go to our 3D view. And 
that's not bad but you can see because we have an elliptical top rail the transition in form so what's happened is one of them is at 90 degrees the other one is cut at an angle of 45 degrees and so there's a mismatch in the end shapes one is perfectly elliptical and the other one slightly different so there is a way in which we can overcome that just by editing the top rail so that's what we're going to do next now to select the top rail all you need to do is to highlight the top rail and then tab now we can select the top rail and you get an option to just edit the top rail on its own so we select that and then we select edit path and we get the same path editing options now this is slightly bit different in so much as we can edit this in 3d so I'm going to change my view to wireframe so I can see what's going on and what I would like to do is to, where this comes down there's my endpoint is just to come horizontal for a little bit and you see what it does it uh, changes the form to match the horizontal form so we can accept that and again and now if we take it from wireframe back to shaded that is a much better intersection and that is all we need now what I could do again at this point is to select the one coming up the stairs say edit path switch back to my plan view and I'll just take my line back a little bit further to there so that we don't have the overlapping forms and then if we switch to our 3d view it's ideal and that's how we get a continuous rail from one flight to another in the Revit environment.